Hi, my name is Mpatamali here in Cape Town, South Africa. Before we continue with this video, well, you'll have to forgive me if you do hear any background noise, vehicles passing outside, bangs here and there. Well, my apartment is situated just next to a street here in Cape Town. So for now, please forgive me, but I can assure you that sooner or later we will get it right and uh, we'll be more or less uh, of that noise. Well, into the video. Well, we all, if not most of us, have relatives, some we love and cannot do without, and some we really don't like that much, but they are still our relatives. Though most of us that have relatives can agree that some of our relatives are really never ever supposed to be under one roof because if they do happen to ever come under one roof, the results might be somewhat memorable. Well, to use this as an example, let's perhaps name these relatives. Uh, let's label them. Just, just for an example, bear with me. One relative, we probably label them as pride, the other as greed. And we label the one that we probably don't like that much as evil. Then we take all of them and put them under one roof. Then we label this roof a human being. Well, the results, as I said earlier, might end up creating a story like this one that we're going to look into in this video. And this is the twisted case of Jade Lean Panayitu. Police won't name the 28-year-old suspect as he is yet to appear in court. She made me feel like the luckiest man alive. Forgive me for the last name. It is a bit of a tricky name, a surname. So for this case, to avoid butchering the name, We'll call her Jade P. Who was Jade Panayetu, or Jade P, for the case of not butchering her surname, was a 29-year-old high school teacher, area or a town or a city, let's put it that way, known as Port Elizabeth. And this is found in the province of Eastern Cape in South Africa. So the equivalent of a province might be a state in some other parts of the world. But here in South Africa, they are broken down mainly from provinces then going on down. So the province of Eastern Cape, Port Elizabeth, and in Port Elizabeth, there was a school known as Ribix College Girls High School. And this is where she was a junior high school teacher. Jade was an attractive, beautiful teacher. I've always believed having an attractive educator has more of a positive impact towards younger students, if I should put it that way. You're more attentive, you're more eager to go to the class, because, hey, you're gonna see your beautiful educator in front of you. You know, you also develop an attention to detail that might come out very wrong. But the point being is, indeed, you know, she was very, very beautiful, judging from her pictures. And on that note, as I was busy researching for this story, I happened to find that her Facebook account was more partially still open and um, it was evident to see that she loved traveling and really, really, really loved animals because most of her pictures is just her husband and definitely pictures of animals. So she was an animal lover, an educator and loved traveling. As I did my research, it appears, you know, she had all those qualities of being a homemaker, someone you'd want to marry start a family with. Wait, she was married. And that brings me to the next person, the main character in this story, Chris Panayetu, Christopher. Jade was my draft to do better. Jade kept me going. Now, who was Christopher Panayetu? Christopher, more or less, picture that guy in high school who came from a good family, always had the cool stuff, 
was good looking, family, middle class, always had money. So Chris, as I've mentioned, a businessman, running, taking over the family business. And their family put Elizabeth, were part of a franchise known as the OK Grocer, which is also owned by a very uh, big franchise as well known as ShopRite. If you are from South Africa, you probably are aware of those names. But uh, just to go on, and he also happened to own a nightclub, more of a cocktail bar lounge, an eatery, if we should put it in a more simpler terms. So he was more of a businessman, and they had a lovely apartment in an area known as Carvega Park. Uh, these names might not mean anything to you if you're watching internationally, but probably they who are from Port Elizabeth and you know, know the story, know the area. So moving on, yes, he had a good head over his shoulder and someone that probably your family would be happy if your daughter or your sister were to bring home or get married to. This was the picture of Christopher Panayetu. So the two meet through mutual friends uh, around mid late 2000s. By the time it's 2013, they get married and it's the usual husband and wife stuff. Hey, let's go for a holiday. Next stuff, obviously wake up early in the morning, go to work, how are you baby, so on and so forth. This was a white picket fence kind of a marriage or was it? Let's find out and let's break it in a timeline fashion just to see how this case became a case. By the time it's April 2015, by now a little bit of frustration especially towards the wife because you know she worked more of a day job, a nine to five if we put it that way in a more simpler way. She would go to work early in the morning, come back in the evening. For the husband it was more of a tough one because I mean to run a grocery store and then after that go in later and see how the nightclub or the bar, the lounge is running can really consume more of your time. So it's understandable he was spending more and more less time at home. But eventually what would come out during the case that she started feeling lonely and she would reveal this to her sister, also reveal this to her best friend who fortunately they were working together, both of them being teachers at the same school. Now both of them had an arrangement. This is where I introduce Cherise Swanepo, also another name that I struggle with which happens to be an Afrikaans surname. So we'll just stick to Cherise. So Miss Cherise and Jade were close friends. I mean they were working together and uh, did reside a little bit you know far apart or close apart from each other put it that way. So what they really came up with was an idea. An idea to more or less share the costs of traveling or transport. So they would work out a few days and one of them would probably pick the other up this week and use their car and then the other week the other one would do the same. So they had a very good arrangement here and this is how they did it for quite a while. Which brings us to the 21st of April 2015. Cherise arrives at uh, Stellan Glen complex this is where Jade resides, gets the phone out, try and call the landline or maybe the main house telephone line to try and see if she could get in contact with Jade because it's they were supposed to meet outside, it's not. But she had a little bit of a doubt because on this specific day, which is the 21st of April 2015, it was more or less drizzling and probably you know, she had the thought of maybe she's in the house, you know, staying away from the bad weather. Try to call phone, Jade's phone was straight into voicemail, not even ringing. Long story short, she eventually manages to get hold of Jade's husband who was in the house at that time, uh, sleeping. Because normally he would probably more or less sleep in late because the nature of his job would, you know, allow him to do that. He was also surprised as well because, I mean, his answer to Cherise was like, well, I expect her to be at work just as normal because she left in the morning. And Cherise is like, no, I've tried to, you know, call her, phone is off, I haven't picked her up, so it's unusual. And, 
you know, she knows I'm coming to pick up, so I don't know. So obviously alarm bells go, you know, they get together and they start looking for Jade. They drive around the complex, around uh, Deacon Road, they go around the building, the block, to see if maybe she wandered off a little bit, you know, so on and so forth, so maybe she fainted somewhere, you know. They came to no avail. The family joins in, mainly Jade's father, and the such continues. By this time, it's all over the news because the police is already involved as well. Where could Jade be? No one knows, no one has seen her. Eventually, later the course of the day, they um, see some activity within a Jade bank account. So basically, someone was trying to withdraw money uh, from an ATM which was located at a place known as Jolly Square, which is also a few minutes-ish away from the area as to where she resides. So they're putting one and two together. Uh, they kind of, you know, expecting or more or less thinking, okay, maybe she was mad and then, you know, kidnapped and then these guys are trying to get some money out of her. Then eventually they'll release her because, hey, South Africa, uh, crime rate is insane basically and um, so this is what you know they were hoping and at even one more point at one time the dad Sharice and Christopher Chris Panaye to the husband got into a vehicle after a tip-off as to the location of the ATM and all they could get from the ATM was you know security footage or more or less of a picture that was more not very clear but it could show it was a gentleman or a person or a guy or a man who was at that very moment trying to get some money out of Jade's account. People were still looking for Jade, no one could find her. 22nd of April 2015, Jade's body was found just at the outskirts of a township in Port Elizabeth known as Kwanobukle, which had a road next to it known as Wincanton. And somewhere around there in the bushes, just close to the junction somewhere, is where Jade's body was located. Sadly enough, well, obviously, family and police went to the scene. It was a crime scene. 23rd of April, word or news came out and it was confirmed that indeed there was foul play. Um, Jade's body appeared to have bullet wounds. So basically, long story short, she was shot three times, two in the back, one in the head. But strangely enough, it appeared to be almost execution style. Well, there was nothing to go on with at that moment. But it was a shock, especially to the school that's where she, you know, was a teacher. She was young, just 29. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was really buffering at that time. So time goes on, the funeral takes place, 28th of April. Jade Lean Panayetu was laid to rest. The funeral service was, just to use a simple word, it was super sad and touching. Friends and family were at the church, the home, it was broadcast live and we were able to also, you know, pick up as to the kind of grief everyone was experiencing, especially the husband. And one touching moment that I do remember, obviously, is the husband getting there next to the coffin and he had to deliver a eulogy. And it was the words, you know, the, the way he delivered it. Oh, it was such a sad moment, you know, to lose your wife just like that. And be known to most people at that time, the police had already got a breakthrough. Someone had called at the day early on the 27th of April with a little bit of information. Because what happened is when Jade disappeared, the family, friends came together, put some money together, and you know, they put the money up for anyone who could come forward with any information. It was uh, roughly about an equivalent of about $8,000, which works out to roughly 150,000 Rand here in South Africa. News was buzzing, social media as well, you know, um, radio stations looking for a high school teacher who's just disappeared and vanished into thin air. It's only until the next day the sad news arrived. What happened is 
the police or the investigating officers or whoever was leading that team, they were able to trace back the phone call to whoever was claiming to be an informant and that person in question at that time was arrested. His name being Tando Sioni. So him coming to light is where everything else as to what happened was revealed, shocking as it was. So Sioni worked as a bouncer at one of Christopher's businesses, mainly Infinity Bar Cocktail Lounge Eatery. At one time in late October, around the year 2014, as per his confession, he recalls the boss approaching him and pulling him to the side to ask him if he could find someone who could help him with something that was really bothering him. I mean, someone who was able to get rid of a problem. Long story short, Sioni said he's gonna try and find that. And he did, and he did try to find a couple of people, so about two or three of them didn't go through. And then finally, Sioni was able to, you know, bring three other players into the picture. And they met with Christopher, who in turn, obviously put money on the table to see that his wife was taken out of the picture. Now, the reason being that Christopher was claiming he was running broke. He couldn't afford, he was running out of money. Um, the wife was costing him so much, they had to get a new house. And if he divorces the wife, probably he's gonna lose the inheritance because already the family, Christopher's family, were aware that he was having an affair. So strangely enough, Christopher and Jade got married in the year 2013, though, one year before that, 2012, Christopher had acquired himself a mistress. He was romantically involved with one of the managers at his businesses. So namely, her name is uh, Miss Chanel Coates of Coates. I can never really pronounce that name as well. But Chanel and Chris were, you know, doing the little Humpty Dumpty on the side. And the audacity that he actually still went ahead and married Jade. So poor Jade, you know, under the notion that she has a happy family, husband, loyal. Meanwhile, he's not really satisfied with her. He was having an affair. We've had those stories here and there, but that was the case. And so he was complaining that he's running out of money, he can't handle this and that. And so the solution that he came up with is obviously to get rid of Jade. And he decided to find someone who could hire Hitman to do the job. And of course, what he wanted, he got. Because he put 80,000 Rand on the table, which is roughly, I'd say $5,000 if we put it that way, if my calculations are right. And that was just the beginning of it. So by the time it's 2015, schools have just begun because this would be the only ideal time to do this. If it was on holidays, she would barely be outside and she would be looking more suspicious. There were two attempts, or three rather, before the one that was successful. Chris came up with a lovely idea. He told Sioni, listen, what I'm gonna do is I'll invite my wife for dinner at our club, our bar, Infinity where Sioni worked as a bouncer. Now you're going to position your guys perhaps at the parking lot. When my wife arrives, you should indicate what car my wife is driving. And after dinner, she's going back, driving herself back. This guy should follow her and make it look like a hijacking go wrong or something like that. So luckily, Jade on this specific day was not really feeling it. So she's like, oh no, you know, I'm not gonna come through. I'll just stay at home, I'll see you later. So obviously, there's no way Christopher is going to push it, you know. And um, yeah, that was fail. Second attempt, Chris goes and uh, gives the guys Sharice's address, the friend. Remember the friend who would pick up uh, Jade from home, so and forth. So Chris goes on and he gets the address and he gives it to, you know, Sioni and the hitman. Um, 
So Cherise was staying in a location known as Ruth Street, which is also in an area called Glenherd, which is close by but still in Port Elizabeth. So it's not really that far apart, I'd say the most perhaps 20 minutes more or less. And um, obviously him being the husband, he knew of the arrangement, you know, someone would go pick up, the other one they are there. So probably, you know, he sat down and he said, hey guys, uh, you know, this would be the ideal time. And it was that opportunity where these guys tried to do this, but on this specific day when they tried to go and, you know, proceed with what they needed to do, it was raining again, the weather wasn't right, so they didn't succeed as well. Third attempt, the hitmen themselves came up with an idea and they were like, look man, how about we break into your home or your house and we do it there? Chris was like, no, wait, wait, that, that really would not work because I happen to have a neighbor who is a police officer and the complex is, you know, tightly secured. So it would raise questions as to how the, you were able to, you know, access here and there so it really won't work though Chris came up with another idea how about you wait for her outside the complex on a specific day because what happens is usually Cherise the friend would come and pick her up and then go together to work so what she usually does is she would wait outside the complex and what do you know this so happened on the 21st April 2015 the guys picked her up, more or less kidnapped her, put her in a trunk and drove off. And they drove more or less half an hour away, all the way to Wincanton Road, found a nice spot more or less. Probably proceeded to get her pin code or you know, number from the, for the ATM for the bank card and executed her cold-bloodedly. Then drove back went, attempted to get some cash, which they did get a little bit of cash from the ATM. And uh, that was it. And they um, went into hiding, so on and so forth. And uh, this was the confession from the middleman, Tando Sioni. So on the 29th of um, April 2015, they really did not have any evidence that would probably, you know, tie Christopher to the murder exactly. So they needed something. They came up with a brilliant plan, but they needed Sioni to comply, which he did. And this was to get Christopher to incriminate himself, and which he proceeded to do as well. So Sioni and the police came up with a plan where he, he had a meeting with Chris at one of the Steers parking lots. So Steers is a franchise you'd find all over South Africa. It's more or less like Kentucky Chicken or probably if you have your McDonald's on and so forth. So Steers is one of the more popular ones as well here in South Africa. And you can find every town you go to, you should probably be able to find one or two. And that's those one near the town and they found a parking lot and um, Chris and Sioni met. Chris got into the vehicle and knowing that it's an unmapped police vehicle with hidden cameras and voice recorders, he proceeded to have a conversation with Sioni. Needless to say, he did, he was able to incriminate himself in this recording. So sooner or later the police, um, you know, came in and Christopher Panayetu was arrested for the murder or more or less for orchestrating the murder of his wife. Appeared in court and from 2015 all the way to November 2017. That's how long the trial went. And yes, they did get life behind bars, but still it didn't bring Jade back. And that's what I was saying, you know. So you look at pride, um, you know, how if, if people find out that he divorced his wife because of an affair, or maybe if people find out that he was running broke, the big boss like him, you know, how would people think of that? So he can't have that. So what's the solution is to reduce his expenses by killing the wife.
that's right over there. You look at greed. Um, he has two ladies. One loves him, the other probably I don't know, maybe love, or whatever. Because I don't know. I don't think it's love because she knew he was married, but she still had an affair with him because of all the material gain. So greed from Christopher and the mistress. You put all that together and also evil when you get this thought and then you put money that makes you feel you have power combine all of that into a human being and there you have it you know so christopher <sighs> robbed the world of the life of a beautiful person again there we go why Thank you very much for watching again one of uh, Dan Deed's videos. We are getting there slowly. Please leave me a comment below if there's anything you would you know, suggest or a story that probably you would want to hear from Africa. I'd gladly timeline it for us so we can see. And um, yeah, if you like uh, this video, please, you know, indicate there by smashing that button, as they say. Click like. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Yay.